Throughout the conference, you'll find a headset on your chair. Gianbar,是属于全球白内障治疗领域重大突破。白内障低眼眼,有巨大的公共,卫生,经济学价值和社会意义。上市后,各位全球六亿白内障患者带来光明。润儿,致力为全球眼科患者提升生命质量,为人
Welcome to East Tech West. Please take your seats and put your mobile phones on silent. We are about to begin. We will be providing both English and Mandarin translations throughout the conference. You'll find a headset on your chair. For day two of East Tech West, 女士们、先生们，大家早上好，欢迎。Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for day two of East Tech West. We hope you have a pleasant evening. Are you all satisfied with last night dinner? I found the red one excellent, but it's a pity that I have to leave early to prepare for today's hosting script. I hope everyone have a great time last night, and please have a few extra drinks. So, is everyone ready to begin today's agenda? Okay. Before we officially kick off the second day, let's take a moment to review some highlight from yesterday. Because those things are usually are, are private companies and private companies that are going going fast. Yes, I, I think that there are some interesting companies in in software. There's the next generation of of autonomous driving, AI driven healthcare、um, is going to be one of the real revolutionary things that are going to happen over the next ten years. Not only me, lots of the big AI player in United States and Silicon Valley truly believe AI in healthcare. Gonna be the biggest industry opportunity. When you want to integrate AI into the vertical industry, actually the the domain expertise, the industry know-how is the key. 可以说，十多年我们从事农业科技的这个时间里面，我们看到地球上面临的，只要是干旱，或者是洪水，或者是刚才您提到的森林大火等等，农民在这里面基本都没有太大的就是抵抗能力，所以我们就说 climate resilience 这个程度是非常低的。那怎么去去做呢？我觉得呃有几个方面，一呢是我们要把农业生产的决策慢慢的交给。呃，真正的可能说不能说人工智能嘛，至少做给到数据分析和系统化的决策，这样的话才能大大概率的规避掉一些风险。You need to work with your partners, and your partners need to understand what you're doing. To work with the industry partner to make sure that the products we deliver to the market they are green products, green products with green technology, less plastic packaging, reduce the weight on especially on the consumption of carbon. So this is、um, our main purpose. Right now in Europe. Europe, European Union is there is regulation that's coming、uh, in force、uh, starting next year. There's something called EU ETS, whereby all the ship that will、uh, go to Europe, they will measure 50% of the carbon、uh, emission footprint, and that will translate into a tax. Effectively, it's a carbon tax, and naturally that will impact other consumer. So I think it's just a trade-off that people uh, will uh, have to live with. One thing we're seeing on a larger macro scale globally. Is a consumer-driven、uh, desire for products which are not harmful to the environment. Institutional money are looking for pockets of green assets to invest, as well as brown assets that will need to be converted for every quarter throughout 2022. And from the beginning of the year, we had about 50 billion flowing in sustainable investments, with only 2 billion flowing in the non-sustainable investments. So the, the stickiness is definitely there. One of our customers actually told me today. They can raise、uh, ESG bonds, ESG debt from their their investors if they prove in、yes. their reporting and their practice that、uh, within their supply chain they're using clean or cleaner trucks for transportation and also the rest of the supply chain. So, talk about you know paying for clean、um, options.、Uh, there's actually a way to、uh, perhaps make more money or raise、mm -hmm. more money、mm -hmm. by going the clean route.
So you can see our agenda yesterday was filled with exciting discussions, especially exploration of AI. Opportunities in China's capital market and topics like ESG sustainability, supply chain, blockchain, smart agriculture, etc. So I really look forward to the second day. So in our first session today, we were diving into a highly popular topic, autonomous driving. Let me share an intriguing story with you. In August of this year, Waymo and Curse, two autonomous driving companies, were granted permission for operating self-driving taxi in San Francisco. Although these vehicles still have human supervisors, several accidents have occurred, leading to strong opposition from the local community regarding the autonomous vehicle operation. So that is what's happening in San Francisco. Moreover, there are pessimistic views on the technical front, whether be it the later based vision algorithm based, suggesting that we might never reach level four autonomy. Is that really the case? How can we achieve true comprehensive autonomous driving? Now, please welcome Evelyn and her panel of experts to the stage. Welcome. For another exciting discussion about autonomous driving, I have uh, JD, Pony AI, and also RoboSense. This session is going to be in Chinese, so please adjust your translation devices. Uh, 今天非常荣幸我们听到三位在这个自动驾驶行业的著名领导。So uh, today, I have uh, three guests with me. Firstly, we have uh, Mr. Liu Dong, Head of Intelligent Driving at Jingdong Logistic, Head of Intelligent Driving at Jingdong Logistic, and Lu Yimuo, VP of Pony AI and Head of the Guangzhou Shenzhen Research and Development Center at Pony.ai. And also with us is Mr. Mark Liu Chiu, Executive for Director and Executive President of uh, Robinsons. <laughs> It seems that my Chinese is not good as I expected. Maybe my pronunciation is not that good. Please bear with me with that. Okay, so today, this year, we see the autonomous self-driving have changed profoundly here in China. And some people complained years before that we spend too much money or even waste too much resources on development of self-driving. But it seems that it's no longer the case. We can see that in April of this year, in some major automobile exhibitions, we see their new mode uh, for autonomous um, and new energy vehicles. And some of them are very warmly applauded by the buyers and the general public. So on this circumstances, I have some questions for my panelists. What's your comments on that? So firstly, I personally want to share some of my personal opinions. For self-driving, I hold a optimistic perspective about it. In particular, this year, we see a milestone development for the self-driving technology. What I want to share with you are some data. Firstly, for the Pony AI G6, a self-driving technology, in particular is Max version, means it's based on later and on a highly developed algorithm. This version and the combination of the technology proved to be very popular among the buyers. Last year, we believe maybe 10% or 15% of the buyers will prefer to wait. However, the fact proved that over 70% of the buyers prefer to this version. So that is amazing. And also we have another new model of a self-driving car and over 80% of the buyers shows their favor for that new model. So I believe the data is very persuasive. Self-driving version proved to be very popular. So from those data, we can see that for the self-driving technology, as the concept have been warmly accepted by the buyers, by the consumers. Consumers, the drivers are willing to buy 
a new model like this. So that is why I'm optimistic about this prospect. The popularity of the self-driving version greatly exceed our expectation. That's the first point I want to emphasize. Well, the second point is that besides the unexpected great popularity among the drivers, the self-driving technology also has embraced a new era for the automobile industry. We are living in a highly automated era, during which we also see there is a growing interest and a growing demand for the autonomous driving technology and service. That is why more and more automobile manufacturers making great upfront investment on the autom autonomous driving technology to be a kind of uh, early mover and take the early mover advantage on the market. That's the second point. Where the third point, last week we also saw a milestone event. Now in the past, we believe that only those uh, car models over 400,000 RMB will be equipped with the autonomous driving technology. Because you know that autonomous driving technology is very costly. The licensing fee is about 30,000 RMB and you have to pay some monthly subscription. So from our expectation, we only expect those drivers who are willing to buy a car over 400,000 RMB will be willing to pay for the autonomous driving. But from last year onward, we can see even those um, cars sell, sells at about, selling at about 300,000 RMB will also be equipped with the autonomous driving technology. For example, G6, um, about 250,000 RMB, it's a new model of a pony. It also is equipped with autonomous driving. Last week, GAC also launched LS6. LS6 as a model is also equipped with R-ring and the laser-based uh, radar. So you can see it proved to be a great success on the market. On the first day of its launch, it have received uh, 68,000 orders. So I believe this event is also very illustrative. It shows that our expectation is not in line with the reality. We can see that those cars whose price is over, say, 300,000 or 400,000 will be equipped with the self-driving technology. And we believe their threshold of the price will continue to go down. That means autonomous driving technology will have a greater penetration rate in future. And another point is that in the automobile industry, there is a very heated discussion about the new version of um, models. For example, maybe you will have a pro model. Well, the pro model compared with the average model or standard model is a more advanced model equipped with the autonomous driving, uh, driving technology. But it's no longer the case. Even for the mass version now, most of them are equipped with autonomous driving. So we can see that over 70 or even 80 percent of the new energy vehicles will be equipped with the autonomous driving technology. Only the rest 20 to 30 uh, percent of their models will uh, not be equipped with technology. So judging by these events, we can see these two very special core information. So that's what I would like to share with you. I see. So from the perspective of the consumers, it is uh, easier and easier for them to understand and accept uh, autonomous driving. And now we have some driverless taxes, and I believe that we can see more and more driverless taxes on the road in China. Can you tell us more in detail? Like here in Nanshan, we may see more taxes like that. 
Yes, you're right. In the past one year, we have made a lot of、uh, changes in autonomous driving because we have some new policies in different areas of the country, like Yizhuang in Beijing and Nanshan in Guangzhou. We can see more and more driverless dri、uh, cars running on the road. They are not only on trial; they are actually providing services to the passengers. So, like I said, we are commercializing the driverless taxis in Beijing, and I believe that in Shenzhen, Guangzhou, and other first-tier cities where the policies are more open-minded, we will have more and more driverless taxis. We can actually charge the passengers for the fees when they take a ride on those、uh, driverless taxis. So we will continuously testing and promoting those、uh, driverless taxis. In fact, you can use your cell phone. You can log on our app, and you can hail a driverless taxi very easily. When the taxi arrives, you can see no real hu human being is on the car, and the whole taxi is driven by AI and different kind of computer software. So you will find it very interesting. But I believe that in the future, this kind of、uh, autonomous driving technology will be more prevailing. It could be used by more and more people as an ordinary product. So we are now changing the whole landscape when the policies are being updated. Like you said, in San Francisco of USA, there are also driverless drive、uh, taxis on the road. And in China, we are also accelerating the commercialization of driverless taxis in China, and I believe that more and more people would like to try this kind of taxis. That's the first thing I would like to say. The second thing is that, like Pony AI, we have got the latest generation of autonomous driving vehicle. It is different from the previous versions, and we are now using massive production. And you can see that in our、um, vehicle, we used to have a radar underneath, but now we use a very new component, which is smaller and lighter. And that component is actually provided by Mr. Chu. So I would like to thank him a lot. And we are also using more and more of these gadgets over there. And in the future, both hardware and software could be applied on our vehicles while cutting their cost and enhancing their、uh, reliability. In addition to this、uh, laser radar on the vehicle, we also update our computing hardware. In the past, we used big、uh, computer. And now we use a small chip, and the chip is installed in a very small gadget, which is put on the car. So with the radar and arena, the chip, we can actually have the ownership of the Hayton, and we are now using them to produce more and more vehicles to the customers. So in the future, we will keep using them in the driverless vehicles. And we are putting them in massive production, and we you will see more and more these、uh, cars in the road. Like here in Guangzhou and Beijing, we have got the、um, permit to test the autonomous driving vehicles on those two cities. And in the future, when we produce more and more cars, when we get more and more experience in this regard, we can actually enhance the quality and the quantity of the vehicles of autonomous driving. So when we do that in the future, we can actually, like by 2050 or 2060, we can provide the services of autonomous driving in different cities in the country. Well, yeah, I would like to tell talk more about the commercialization of the autonomous driving cars in the future, and then we will see about industrialization.
like when you have your inventory, you also have different scenarios to use a scenario, uh, use autonomous driving. Can you also tell us about that from JD Logistic? Yes, yeah, we are a logistic company, and JD has a uh, four hundred thousand people to deliver products to different uh, customers. So we have a team of delivery men, and we use a big team of trucks and uh, vehicles to send our products to our customers. But our delivery men also use some new uh, vehicles to help them to get to the customer faster. And we also work with Dada, our partner, so we can also have um, more connectivity in different uh, community. For example, in some office buildings, it's not possible for our delivery man to get into the office. So we can find a way to get a, something like a shuttle bus or a shuttle device to send the products to our customers in those uh, offices. And it can actually enhance the efficiency of our delivery. And in the past several years, we have witnessed rapid uh, transformation of autonomous driving. It is safer and safer, and it is cheaper and cheaper. And I believe that we have a lot of potential to commercialize autonomous driving, like in our logistic company. I see. So in the future, we can also um, deliver the products to more scenarios. It's not to manage the inventory, am I right? Well, part of it, because in our inventory, also we have very good management plan. Um, for example, in the inventory warehouses, we also need to get access to the product by different vehicles. I see. So the next question is about your app. In fact, I also downloaded your app, and I can see that there are a lot of uh, bonus that I can use. So I find it cheaper to use those bonus to hail a taxi. But what about you from Pony AI? Will you have the same promotion of incentive? Well, I see. In fact, in the future, the driverless taxis will be cheaper than the traditional taxis because we don't have to pay the drivers. So in the future, they will be cheaper. So we are hoping to cut the cost of the entire vehicle. And we can make sure that our passengers can enjoy a safe and a cheap um, ride when they are on the driverless taxis. But what we are doing now is to enhance the safety not to cut the price of the service. And now we are trying to promote from 100 to 1,000, and finally we can promote it to like 10,000 units every time we produce a patch of vehicles. So we need to enhance the computing capacity of our company. And we also need to work um, with our partners like the chips providers, like RoboSense, who provide us with the sensors, they also need to support us to cut the cost of driverless taxis or driverless vehicles. And of course, now we will also try to provide some promotion to our customers to encourage them to use our driverless vehicles. But in the future, even without the promotion or the discount, our passengers will still find our driverless taxis cheaper and safer. I see. What about you, Mr. Chu from Robot Sense? You are a provider to different kind of vehicle makers. So, what do you think about the industry of autonomous driving? Our we have products which are categorized into two kinds. The first kind of our products are very accurate. So we need to make very accurate uh, rays, a laser rays, a ray sensor. I provided to like Mr. Liu or Madam Moore and I 
will charge them for a higher price. But beginning from 2017, we began to think differently. I think it's okay to charge our customers for a high price. We also need to try the other way around because we need to satisfy the needs of our customers. Let's take the vehicle industry for an example. They are asking for good quality and low price. And that is an urgent need we need to satisfy. So beginning from 2017, we try to provide applicable solution by cutting our costs while maintaining our high standard of quality. So in 2017, we published, we released our first version of the gadget that is also a radar. It is cheaper and we also sell them to North American markets and we are now in massive production. We have 21 OEM and TMI uh, partners. They are all using our products in their end product. And so far, we have been uh, working with over 10 customers who are asking for SOP. So yes, we are providing hardware. The hardware include um, the components for the vehicles and for the platform and for the whole system. So we keep thinking how we can cut the cost while maintaining the quality. And the answer is that we go for economic upscale. How can we do that? First of all, we need to get the support from many customers. They are the solid foundation for us to upscale our economy. And we need to have we need to have some bargaining power with our partners. And when we get that, we can also develop our chips. The chips could be better and our whole products could be better. And when we enhance the quality of the chips, we can enhance the quality of the whole product by cutting the cost. Just like um, Madam Moore from Pony AI said, we offer them with the gadget asking for a price about 500 US dollars. And in the past, we asked for 10,000 US dollars for offering them a sensor, which is bigger. And we will continue to provide more new products because we want our vehicles to cope with more complicated traffic on the road. Just like uh, Mr. Leo for L uh, JD Logistics, your trucks only need to run for dozens of meters. It's not a long distance. Then you can choose this product. And we will always focus on scale, especially for the car industry. We are looking for SOP. And with the support of the market, we can see some uh, emerging industries and sectors, and there are a lot of things that we can help them to do. So all in all, we need to explore the application, and we need to try to sit for different kind of scenarios. Like we are talking about the car industry, we enhance the quality by cutting the cost. Thank you. So from your observation, we can see the in the process making every effort to enhance their market positions in the autonomous driving technology. And I see that the great concerns about the security and safety of this technology. So in from the perspective of testing, what kind of measures or what kind of plan have been or will be adopted by you to ensure the safety of this technology. Okay, at the early stage, you know, we will equip the self-driving car with supervisors to uh, mitigate any emergencies when driving on the road. And now, what we have been doing is trying to remove the supervisor from self-driving car. Because now we see going accuracy, increasing accuracy of our technology. Based on our algorithm, we have the confidence that even in some emergency, 
our self-driving technologies can handle it properly, even without a supervisor. And our technology is equipped with the 5G laden, so we believe that our sensors can detect the emergencies in the first place and process it appropriately. And also in testing, we have our device on simulative uh, scenarios where we, we try to continuously improve the safety of our technology. Therefore, we have uh, collected real data from the day life and in the real transport scenario, where which we will continuously op train and optimize and iterate our algorithm. And for the sensors, we have been continuously improve our sensor. So from the sensor to the radar and also to uh, the infrastructure and component of the vehicle, we have been continuously improve our technology. Thank you, our gratitude goes to Evelyn and her panel. You just mentioned the autonomous driving. Well, based on that, we maybe can move our discussion to an even higher level. What do I mean? That means we will talk about the connectivity boosted by the uh, space technology and also the 5G based GPS technology. So now we will have our Louis Hong, the VC founder of 